In Zen, they say it's the, uh, it's the space between the bars that holds the tiger. And it's the silence between the notes that makes the music. These words that are coming out of my mouth right now come out of the silence. And finding that silence and embracing it means that you go to the place within you that you cannot divide, just like you can't divide the source, the one, the spirit. You can't divide that either. It's only one. So when you go into your silence and you begin to practice meditation and you begin to make this a part of your life and embrace silence, what you discover is this is where you'll come to know your source. You'll make conscious contact with your source. I can't tell you how many people that have come to me who have suffered from serious illnesses, who've been giving, given diagnoses that it's terminal and that you can't do it, who have gone out to the wilderness and have decided that I am going to commune with nature. And the transcendentalists, Thoreau and Emerson, they believed that nature was our source and that we were all products of nature. And if you can get back to your source, if you can get back to that feeling of being with spirit, that that's where healing can take place. And I've had wonderful stories of people who've told me that it was when I began to embrace that silence that I began to feel more connected to my source. Embrace silence because it's a way to come to know God, to know your source. Both are indivisible. And the only experience you can have in your daily life that even comes close to a spiritual awake awakening is silence. The next principle I call giving up your personal history. And I learned it from a man named Carlos Castaneda who once said that um, one day he said, I finally realized that I no longer needed a personal history. And just like drinking, he said, I gave it up. And that, and only that, has made all the difference in the world. You know the nice thing about giving up your personal history? Is that if you don't have a story, you don't have to live up to it. All of us have these bags of manure that we carry around with us, called our past and the people who have done things to us and the events and the circumstances, all of this stuff that we use and we bond to, and we bond ourselves to these wounds of our past and we identify ourselves on the basis of these wounds. And every once in a while we set it down and we reach in there and we smear it all over ourselves. And then we wonder, why does my life smell so bad? I don't understand this. When in fact, the now, this moment, merging yourself into the now means that you may have been in a relationship. I had a woman from Holland who came over to see me whose husband had left her after 25 years. She had four children, and she just had been on the verge of suicide. And she was losing weight, and she was depressed, and she was taking all kinds of drugs for it, and she was getting sicker and sicker because she just couldn't get over it. And she came to a book signing that I was doing at a bookstore down in Florida. And she said, you've got to say something to me. You've got to say something to me that will help me to get over this. And I told her this line. I said, give up your personal history. Merge yourself here now into this moment. And those 25 years are something, if you want to understand how to do it, think of your past as, oh, this hat. And this is your past. Now, you can't just set this thing down over here and walk away from it and give up your personal history because you'll always have it there to look back at. What you do is you pick up your past and you embrace it. You understand it, you accept it as I had to go through these things that I had to go through in order for me to get to this place today. And the evidence for that is that I did. You don't need any more evidence. You did. And then you toss it. You toss it. You embrace it, and you toss it. And you merge into the now by giving up your attachment. And some of you have heard me use the metaphor of the wake. Alan Watts talked about the wake is not what drives the boat. 
The wake is just a trail that is left behind. That's all it is. And so is the wake of your life. And the wake doesn't make the boat go, and neither does the wake of your life, the reason why your life is going in the direction that it is. The wake is a trail that is left behind, and it's an illusion to believe that it is the cause of your suffering or your struggles or your difficulty. Give it up. Let it go. Embrace it. Understand it. Get help doing that if you must. And then move into the now. The next principle I call, it's from a line of uh, Albert Einstein. He said, you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it. In order to work at solving these things called problems in your life, you have to change your mind. It is your mind where they live. It is your mind that created them. They, there is where you experience them. They're all illusions. You must change your mind. Literally rewrite your agreement with reality. One of the things I had said earlier is that one of the most difficult things to do in the world is to admit that you were wrong. Admitting that you were wrong is nothing more than saying, I have been making choices with my mind that have created things in my life that are not working. And I no longer intend to continue making those choices. I was wrong. You don't have to make a declaration of it. You don't have to go out and feel guilty about it. You just simply say, it didn't work. The relationship that I was in before, I behaved in these ways. I didn't realize that it wasn't working for me. Now I do, and this is where I choose to be now. The secret of a successful relationship is, to me, understanding that you put your attention and your energy in a person on what you love rather than what you don't love. Robert Frost said it so beautifully. We love the things we love for what they are. For what they are. Not for what they ought to be, not for what they used to be, but for what they are. So when you look into the eyes of a person you're in a relationship with, whether it's your children, you catch them doing things right as much as you possibly can. That's often takes a lot of hunting, but you'll find it. And when you think that my relationship isn't working, remember, it's in my mind, what am I thinking about that person? And if I could just change my mind and put my thoughts on what I love about this person and keep them there, that makes the relationship flourish. And there are people who go through their entire relationship history with no anger, no hatred, no bitterness, and only love. The next principle is, I call it, treating yourself as if you already were what you would like to become. In other words, you get out in front of your life and you see yourself as having already what you know you'd like to have and deserve to have. My children know how to do this perfectly. I have a daughter who wanted a prom dress and the prom dress was way outside the budget that I thought a prom dress should be, uh, well, I thought a prom dress shouldn't cost over $20, so I do have a problem. Huh? But I upped it to somewhere around 250 I don't know how much, whatever. To me, it was still more than I paid for my first house, okay? Uh, but anyway, she called and said, Dad, this is the only prom dress I could wear. This is the, I've got to wear this prom dress. If I don't wear this prom dress, it's just it's on and on and on with this uh, wonderful. You know, I've got a, I saw a wonderful book about how to raise teenage uh, daughters. The title of it is Get Out of My Life. <laughs> But first, drive me and Cheryl to the mall, all right? That's, a, that's the actual title. It's a good book. And so I told Serena, I said, uh, it's just beyond the budget. I've got a certain amount of money that I'm willing to put for it. And she said, but I've already seen myself wearing it. I've already tried it on. I have a picture of myself in the dress in my living room, and I've already showed it to the guy who was taking me to the prom. I mean, it was this whole thing. about, And she already saw herself in it. I said, well... If you see yourself in it, then you're going to have to also see yourself as earning the difference between what I'm willing to pay. And she drew up a contract. She went out to the computer. And on the background of the computer, you know, where they have these little background things they put on, there was 500 pictures of the dress, all right? 